Hi guys, I am AP. In this video, we are going to see the chapter 5 in the book The Intelligent Investor. The chapter 5 is The Defensive Investor and the Common Stock. It is a very important chapter in this book and in this chapter we are going to see how to select the stock for our defensive portfolio. Ok, let's get started. Now let us see the investment attributes of a company. The company should be large, prominent and conservative in finance. The company's past record should show a very good and steady in earnings growth and we should expect the steady earnings growth in the future also and the company should maintain a healthy dividend payout to the shareholders for a long time and the movement of the stock in a short term it is all about the volatility in the market and in long term it is all about the economical situation and the earnings growth and the dividend yield of the company. Now let us consider we are finding a common stock and we are arriving a intrinsic value for the common stock. Even though the share price fall 50% below its intrinsic value and we should never worry about that continuously acquire the stock over a period of time to get the very good results in the market. Ok, in this chapter Raga mentioned two things one should consider. The first one is the long term bear market and the second one is how to get dividend and reinvest it in the same stock itself. Ok, now let us see the long term bear market which is set by Benjamin Graham in this book. Ok, if we invested uh, $1000 in 1929 and in 1954 it would worth around 18,415 dollars and if you are that is about 3.5 percentage return from it and if you are invested in the bond in 1929 then it would have become 21,494 dollars. Ok, one should always expect a long term bear market but our view is so simple that one should always consider buying a common stock below its intrinsic value so that even though in the long period we can accumulate over a period of time to get a good return from it. Okay. Now let us see the current scenario which is happening in the Japan market. Okay. Now we are seeing the Nikkei 25 that is the Tokyo Stock Exchange Index. It is the Japan country's index. Okay. In 1990 the index hit the all time high of around 40,000 but it's been a 33 years from the high but still now this didn't recover to the high itself. It is called the long term bear market one should consider before investing. The Graham's advice is the long term bear market can happen to any index so that the investor should always be ready to invest continuously over a period of time to get a very good return from it. The investor should not panic from a long term bear market. He should always consider a common stock below its intrinsic value and he should regularly invest in that to get a very good return from it. Ok, consider the situation that we are investing $1 in 1900 and we are letting up to 100 years up to 2000. Ok, now we are not inv investing the dividend we are getting from the $1 we are investing in 1900 and the value of the $1 will comes around $195 without a reinvestment of the dividend. Ok, if we reinvest the dividend from the $1 then the amount will be $16,791. It is a huge difference between not reinvesting a dividend and reinvesting a dividend in a same stock or a index itself. This is what Graham says that reinvesting the dividend tail is so important while considering a stock and its earnings growth. In some exceptional cases, the dividend tail of a company can be more high than a high grade bonds which is traded in the market. Okay. Now we are going to see the four important rules one should consider before buying a common stock set by Benjamin Graham. Okay. The rule number one is one should have a diversified stock portfolio but the diversification of the portfolio should come around from 1 to 30 stocks in his portfolio. Whenever the investor willing to add a stock in his portfolio then he should sell a stock from his portfolio so that he could maintain a 30 stocks in his portfolio. It is very easy to analyze the 30 stocks and make decisions over it. Okay. The second rule is the company the investor is buying should be large, prominent and conservative in finance. The company should be a large cap company, a blue chip large cap company and it should be well known around the investors and the company should generate a positive cash flow and a debt free company. Okay. And the third rule is the company should have a long record of continuous dividend payments so that we can reinvest the dividend in the company itself to get the more returns in a period of time. Okay. Now let us see the fourth point. The fourth point is a very important point mentioned by the Graham in the rules of buying a common stock. Ok, investors should always have a certain limit on the price he is paying for the stock. The limit should always correlate with the earnings of the company. Ok, Graham says if we average the last 7 years earnings then we should not pay more than 25 times price to buy the stock and if we 
average the last 12 months earnings then we should not pay more than 20 times price to buy the stock okay if the company is making 1 rupees profit then if the share price is trading at 20 rupees then it is a good buy if the share price is trading above 25 rupees then it is not the correct price to buy the stock even though if the company is prominent and large and conservative in finance if we are paying more price then our return will be so less in long period of time okay now let us see an real time example for educational purpose i choose on the stock itc okay now we are going to find the per share earnings and the p ratio of the stock okay now we are here of 4th september and the current market price of the itc is 438 rupees and the market cap is 546000 633 crores i am using the soft i am using the website screener to get the data okay now we know the current market price and the market capitalization of the company with this we are going to find the total number of shares okay now let us enter the current market price current market price is 438 rupees 438 the market cap of the company is 5,46,663 5,43,663 crores Okay Now that To find the total number of shares We are going to divide the market cap By the number of By the current market price Formula is Now we came the now we find the total number of shares traded in the company. Okay, now we are going to find the earnings. The PAT annum it is the profit after tax annually. The profit after tax is the earnings of the company. It is nineteen thousand hundred and forty one crores. Okay, nineteen thousand hundred and forty one crores. Okay. Now we are going to see how much the profit for one share. For that, we are going to divide earnings divided by the total number of shares. Okay. Now we get the for one share the company is making 15 15.42 rupees profit. Okay. Now we are going to divide the price divided by the per share earnings. That is the P/E ratio. That this is a gram says this is a times how much times we are going to pay to buy the stocks. Okay, we are going to divide the price divided by per share earnings. Okay, now the per share earnings coming here is 28.40, but the gram mentioned in the book is it is not more than 25 times. We can wait for some time to the price to fall. And we can buy the stock if the company is a large prominent and a conservative in finance then we can consider buying this company once the share price falls or come under our pe ratio category okay Nagam also says that if we follow this method and buy stocks then in our portfolio we cannot add a growth stocks in our portfolio now let us see what Graham says about the growth stocks growth stocks is nothing but if the index is earning 100 rupees per annum then the growth stocks should at least earn 105 rupees per annum that is 5 percentage ahead of the index it is what the growth stocks but the growth stocks will always trade in the premium compared to the earnings of this company okay by expecting that the stock will grow more from here in the future okay Ram says and good growth stocks should double its earnings within the 10 years okay in this chapter there are two main things Graham says one the dollar cost averaging we have seen the dollar cost averaging in the previous chapter itself it is nothing but we will select an, an amount and then we will continuously invest the amount in the market even though the market is high or low we should never consider that it is like the systematic investment plan or SIP always do a SIP in an index fund or a prominent stock portfolio okay now let us see what are the risks in the market Graham says there are two risks in the stock market one it is not getting a return from it and the second one is the entire capital loss okay let me conclude this chapter by saying that there is 
a risk in all types of investment but we should avoid that risk by the grahams formula it is we should always consider buying a large prominent and conservative finance companies and by selecting the companies we should apply the grahams rules for buying the stocks and we should consider buying the stocks okay this is it for this chapter and in next chapter we can see about the portfolio policy of the enterprising investor a negative approach if you have any doubts then please comment below i will be very happy to explain you thank you for watching stay tuned